Oh, hi, this is Mike. I'm ready to start. Thank you. All right. I'm going to ask maybe a stupid question, but I think there's value in stupid questions sometimes, right? And, and history, I think, proves stupid question askers uh, right, you know. Descartes looked and said, how do I even know any of this is real, right? How do I even know that I'm alive? And he founded a whole, you know, his, his whole philosophy based on asking that sort of stupid question, you know. I've never asked that question because, you know, uh, I, have, I have bill collectors and, and, <laughs> and bills coming in the mail that reaffirm my existence uh, you know, every, every day or so. But at any rate, uh, sometimes it pays to ask the stupid questions because sometimes the stupid questions have obvious answers, but sometimes they have answers that are far less obvious that are also very important, I guess is my point. So, the stupid question I'm asking today is how does accessing a website on a mobile phone differ from accessing a website on a computer? All right. So when I'm talking about a computer, I'm talking about desktops and laptops. When I'm talking about a mobile device, I would mean a tablet, uh, a smartphone, uh, a Nintendo DS you can access the web on, those sorts of devices. How does it differ? Yeah, the, the obvious question, is, or the obvious answer rather, is the screen size. I forget what my phone's resolution is, but it, it's something like, it's, it's like 400 some across, I think. Maybe, I'm, I'm thinking 400 by 600, or, or 480 by 600, I'm not sure, but it's of that, of that number. Um, it, yeah. Pardon me? That's all, yeah. Just want to make sure I thought maybe I distracted you with No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the screen size is the obvious uh, difference. Um, it is the most obvious difference. Because again, you have a much smaller screen. Much smaller screen means less space, less stuff fits. All right? What's another difference between accessing it on a mobile device versus accessing it on a computer? Okay, now you stated the number of applications that you can put on. Um, that, that's a good answer. That is a difference. That won't necessarily affect browsing the web, right? Because to browse the web, all you really need is a web browser. So all you need is that one application. But it does have some implications. All right. For example, can you run Flash on an iPhone? No, all right? That's one thing the late, great Steve Jobs insisted on, as a matter of fact, is that you will, the iPhone will not support Flash. So in that terms, yeah, you're limited maybe in applications. And for the web, that would mean what we usually call plugins. Most famously, Flash. Uh, iPhone and iPad, no flash. My, most Android devices use flash light, which is like a limited subset of flash. It does some of the things, but not everything. Flash is probably the, the most obvious one to cite, but it would come into play in, in other cases as well. Um, that, that some of those helper applications that, that are necessary when web browsing uh, may be limited. Another difference. Navigation. Navigation, how so? Well, you usually have a keypad, oh, and I don't know all these phones. Right, right, sure. A keypad or a mouse, sure. but now you use the touch screen or your buttons on your phone. Okay, so the way that you interact, the way that the user interacts, 
uh, with uh, 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 mobile devices typically different than the way the user interacts with the computer. Now, the thing to keep in mind is let's, let's start out identifying them and then we can think about are they important, all right? Because maybe some of the things just ain't important, you know, but maybe they are, all right? So the way that the user interacts with the hardware is different. You know, a touch screen versus a, uh, a mouse and keyboard. A, a button on the phone as opposed to, um, again, a mouse or a keyboard. An on-screen keyboard or a little tiny itty-bitty keyboard that you have to hit with your thumbs like that would be uh, the difference. What's another difference? Okay, typically a mobile device, and again, this, this varies wildly, is likely to have a slower, um, lower bandwidth. So it might take longer to, to load a page. You know, if you're you know, loading a page on a good wired connection versus me connecting through Verizon, uh, through their 3G network or whatever, it's going to be it's going to be slower loading it that way. It's even going to be slower uh, if I connect to my what? Uh, it, it's even going to be slower on the Verizon network than if I were to connect to my wireless at home. For example, if my phone at home, if I want to download something, I'll connect to my wireless network, and then the download goes quicker. But when I'm out driving around, if I'm listening to uh, an internet radio station, for example. Uh, the performance can get slow depending on, because I'm connecting to Verizon's network. So the bandwidth is going to be typically lower. All right. Other differences. I think we covered a good part of them, but let's, let's talk about two differences. One that's probably one that we've kind of hinted around at, and the other one is, is probably the most subtle of all, and, and we haven't touched. But one of them is just in general hardware limitations. You know, we all know that, uh, you know, this phone probably has the processing power uh, of computers that computers had years ago. Right? But they're still not as powerful as computers are today. Right? So a mobile device is always going to be less powerful than a full-blown computer. Right? Because, yeah, the mobile devices are getting faster and, and, and more, uh, you know, more extensive, more powerful hardware. Well, guess what? So are the computers. So as one rises, the other one rises too. So it's less powerful. Um, that has implications, again, as far as the applications, that has implications as far as what can store, and again, just implications all over the place. The last difference is probably the most subtle, and that is, has nothing to do with the phone or the computer, but it has to deal with the person using it. All right? A person is likely to have different goals when browsing mobile web, mobile, the web on a mobile device versus on a desktop, let's say, or other computer. Can anyone think of an example of that? How might your goals be different? Let's say I visit CNN on my desktop and I visit CNN on my mobile phone. How might my goals be different? Same website. I'm the same person. Yes. Okay. So 
uh, for example, with the CNN, if, uh, if I was browsing CNN on the web, I might want to take the time to read in detail about stories. All right? If I'm browsing at mobile, I probably just want to see the headlines. Right? What about LC's website? How, how might you use LC's website differently on a mobile device versus uh, if you're browsing it on the web? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Usually, I guess. I guess what I like about that is the statement that if you are accessing a website via your mobile, chances are you have one very specific thing in mind that you're looking for. You're not browsing to go in and get great details about something. If I'm hitting a restaurant's website, maybe I want their phone number. If I'm hitting uh, CNN, I want to see the headlines. If I am uh, hitting um, LC's website, maybe I want to see if the campus is closed or not, you know, if it's a snowy day or something like that. All right? So therefore, there's a, there's a big difference. For example, you would never register for classes on your mobile phone. Uh, never is a big word, but it would be very rare that you would want to go to that trouble simply because that's more of a sit back, think about it, as opposed to an on-the-go, I'm doing something, I want the answers. All right? <clears throat> so, all these things taken together, if we can summarize all these things that we talked about. Smaller screen size. Smaller screen size limited in what applications you might be able to run in addition to that. Is that the one at the door? The manner in which users interact with the hardware is clunkier in a way. Touch screens are not as straightforward and easy as a mouse or a keyboard. Slower bandwidth. other hardware limitations, and finally, a more narrow focus. You're very much task-oriented and wanting to get a particular answer when you browse via mobile phone as opposed to when you browse uh, on your desktop. All these things, you know, if we can summarize them, they all sort of fit into two categories. Limitations, and focus. So, we have some of these issues on even desktop browsing, right? In desktop browsing, we want to make sure our user is focused on the right things. Well, guess what? That becomes maximized even more. That becomes taken to the nth degree when you talk about mobile devices because the focus is going to become narrower. What the people are going to be looking for are, is going to become narrower and much more specific. They may have different goals to focus on. Let's take a look at, I mentioned CNN, let's take a look at CNN's uh, desktop site versus CNN's mobile site. So let's go and let's bring up CNN's site. And I think this will be a good, a good way to look, a good example of this. So let's first bring up CNN. Okay. Oh, we're already on there. Okay. A lot of stuff on here. A lot of categories. You know, amazingly enough, I was thinking the same thing. 
do you think this website is too busy? Yeah, I kind of do. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I, I, I kind of do. I guess I understand uh, that CNN, you know, people are going to be visiting it for a lot of different reasons. So therefore, they want to put a lot of con uh, content on there. And they also want to do the bit, and, and, and I talk to some people about their projects like this. In the newspaper business, they talk about something being above the fold, right? So like if you have a headline, let's say this is a newspaper, you know, You have maybe a main article here, and then down here, I don't know, you have uh, NBA strike like this. Above the fold, what that means is if the newspaper is folded, like on the newsstands, this is above the fold, this is down here. So I guess they're trying to sort of compromise and have the most important stuff above the phone, or above the fold rather, and then a lot of the other stuff down underneath. That being said, I still think this is sort of busy. All right. But so, but anyhow, we have this is the image of CNN site again. Most important stuff above the fold. A bunch of other stuff to accommodate all the other possible goals that someone might have down below. Let's look at their mobile site now. And I hope this is effective. Let me try to zoom. All right. First of all, notice one column and one column only. There is a top story about Italy's prime minister. There's a set of headlines going down. But it's clear that there's way less stuff on here than on their desktop site. Some of the stuff is in common. For example, if we look, It's just presented differently. Here's the top stories. Italy's Prime Minister, Penn State, some of the other ones. We see those here as well. Italy's Prime Minister, Penn State, and some other ones. Under US News, down here, they have a list of five or six different things on the mobile site. They've limited that to three stories about the U.S., some of which are, are the same. Uh, and we go down and let's pick uh, something else. You know, there's entertainment with five or six. There's entertainment with three. Some of the categories, for example, MBA, which is on the desktop site isn't on the mobile site. It's nowhere to be found. All right. So what they've done is they've simplified their site quite a bit. They simplified it in terms of presentation and they've simplified it in terms of content. There's less content, it's more carefully chosen, and it's organized in a different way. It's not organized, or it is organized to accommodate a, a narrower screen. All right. In other words, there's only one column. Scrolling, people talk about scrolling on, on websites. Generally speaking, horizontal scrolling isn't real good, whereas vertical scrolling is okay. All right? In other words, to scroll this way is no big deal. To scroll in both dimensions, horizontally and vertically, uh, becomes uh, more of a challenge for the users to do. So you tend to avoid horizontal scrolling. So what have they done? And what's the lesson of this? And we could probably all summarize this. Is number one, simplify things. Pare it down to accommodate the, the bandwidth, screen size issues. But also 
keep in mind that your users have different goals when they're accessing it one way versus another. And focus on the most important things uh, and maybe even focus on different things on your mobile page uh, than on your home page if, if that, is, uh, that is what you want. Now, let's talk about strategies for developing a mobile site. All right? There's, there's three basic strategies. And then there's like a, a million, well, for two of them, there's like a million flavors of them. All right? A million different ways that you could implement them. Not, not a million. I, I counted them the other day and there was only like 100,000. No, I'm just kidding. There's several ways that you could implement uh, some of these strategies. The first strategy is to do nothing. All right? Do nothing. Use the same mobile site, use the same website for your mobile site as for your desktop site. Is that a good idea? I don't know. It depends. Let's see what LC does. Okay, here's a good example. Look at this. This actually makes me smile because I, I, I think this, at least on the surface, looks pretty good. Here's Elsie's website. A lot of stuff on it, right? Which Again, you could complain about it and you could say it's cluttered, but again, it is a challenge because a lot of people are going to be accessing the site with different needs, so there needs to be a lot of stuff somewhere on the site. Let's look at their mobile site. If you go to lorraineccc.edu, notice what you have. You have just a series of buttons that have Probably the most likely things that you would do. I accidentally bumped the one button. Let me go backwards. Look what the first thing on the list is. Phone directory. Gee, if I'm browsing for my mobile phone, I might want to know someone's phone number. That might be the reason I'm browsing for my mobile phone because my final exam's in 10 minutes and I'm caught in traffic, right? So rather than coming to a page that looks like this, okay, where's the phone directory at? I come to a page like this. So that's an re excellent recognition that the goals of someone accessing your site via a mobile browser is likely to be different than visiting versus uh, a desktop site. Maps and directions, another very reasonable thing to, to have. They have some of these other things and then they have Gee, if you really want to get everything, click and you can go to the full site. Which probably isn't going to look very good, but they at least gave us an alternative, right? They at least sort of warned us that, hey, you probably want to browse this way. Here's the full site if you want to browse that way, which I probably wouldn't. All right? Now, that's a case where they did not use the one-size-fit-all approach. I guess one, one approach to take is the one-size-fits-all, where I'm going to make my website look like, uh, my mobile website look like my uh, desktop site. In some cases, that might work, though. For example, here's a site I may have shown this before. Pretty simple site. What's the mobile version look like? It looks the same. 
Now that's still a little hard to browse, but if you remember, a lot of these phones have the turning capability that if you turn it, it changes the orientation of it. That's actually not bad. You know, it's a little blurry here, but on the screen I can read everything that's going on there. And especially with, with many of these, I can do the pinch functionality to get to, uh, to expand it and zoom in. So that's a case where the site is simple enough where the one size fit all approach, that is don't do anything different for mobile than you did for uh, a desktop application, is a reasonable approach. All right? So that's one possibility. Don't do anything. And it works some of the times. And it would work typically for a smaller site that was already pretty simple. All right? Another approach is to do what LC did. Let's watch and let's look at the URL. Or actually, let's look at CNN because I have that one pulled up. If I type in www.cnn.com, it might be hard to see. But the URL actually doesn't say www.cnn.com. It says m.cnn.com. And if we look at Lorraine's website, Lorraine Community's website, We'll notice the URL gets changed to www.lorraincc.edu slash m. All right? That is known as a server redirect. Server redirects work like this. We have our client which could be someone on a mobile device, or it could be someone on a desktop, connected via the internet, and we have our web server. Our web server looks at the request that comes in from the client for a page, so I type in, let's say, www.lorraincc.edu on my address line, both on my desktop and on my mobile phone, and I click Enter. All right. That request goes to the web server. Along with that request goes a lot of information about the kind of hardware and software I'm running, the kind of web browser I'm running, what my screen size is. A lot of information about that goes to the server. So, what does the server do? Well, again, remember in static pages, the server simply grabs a page and delivers it to the client. Instead, there's a dynamic page that examines info about the client and then redirects the client to either the regular uh, home page or the mobile home page. So the web server has some code in it that says, gee, this person is running a desktop machine, so I'm going to give them the regular home page. This other person's uh, uh, using a mobile device, so I'm going to redirect them to the mobile home page. Think of a server redirect like a forward, uh, a forward of a phone call, right? In other words, let's say someone called me in my office and they wanted to talk about, you know, the Visual Basic class. All right, I'll say, oh, okay. Let me send you to Paul Norod because he's the person that handles that class. So I would forward it to them. Same sort of thing happens here. When a request comes from a web server, the server looks at the request and decides what hardware and software is being used. And based on that, 
it sends that request maybe to a different place. Oh, I'm not going to have, you know, learningccc.edu isn't going to be sent to you. Instead, you're going to be sent to this other page. And that other page is optimized for mobile pages. So that's known as a redirect. All right? It's like a forward where, okay, I'm not going to handle this. Here, here's the mobile page for you. So that's the second strategy. First strategy, do nothing, which can be effective if you have, uh, if you have uh, a, a simple page. The second one is to do a redirect to a mobile page. The third is to write your page in such a way using alternate style sheets so that the user gets the same content, but the appearance of it is different. Now we're coming to one of those really good reasons for separating our presentation for content, right? We might want to give the mobile user the exact same content we're giving our desktop user, but we might want it to look differently. We might want the formatting to be simple. Instead of a two or three columns, we might want to show only one column so that there's no horizontal scrolling. Let me show you an example of this. And I hope you can read this, all right? There actually is, and it's a very dark image, unfortunately, so it doesn't project well. There's actually a background image here. You can see a little bit of the colors poking through over here. And there's some links here that don't show up particularly well on the screen, but they show up reasonably well on the monitor, all right? Here's a page. MikeZellers.com slash test slash test.html. This is the way it looks on a desktop machine. Let me pull that up on my mobile browser. The content of these two pages is the same. Let's look and verify that. On the mobile page, I have Mike's home page, and I have the text mobile version. OK, the content's almost the same, because on the full version, I have Mike's home page, and I have full version instead of mobile version. So the content's a little bit different. I have three links in the navigation here on the desktop page, and a paragraph of Greek text. On the mobile, I have my three navigation links, but they're stacked horizontally, and they're on the top of the page so that everything's in one column. Then I have my Greek text. Finally, at the bottom of the page, I have a copyright notice, and on the bottom of the page here, I have a copyright notice. Let's take a look at how I accomplished that. All right? This is a great case of reaffirming our goals from earlier of separating presentation and content. Because if you had, if you use some of the older techniques for developing web pages that did not use CSS for their design and layout, then you'd really have a hard time making two different versions simply by swapping the, the style sheet. So let's look at this example. If you had to give a date, If I had to give a date, um, are we talking about when CSS was first developed or when CSS became used widespread? Uh, actually, th there'd be the date that CSS was originally developed. Then there'd be the date where there was 
enough browser support uh, where using CSS exclusively for appearance was the best way to go. And 2003-ish, uh, maybe? Okay, yeah, I would say so. Again, that's just a very rough estimate. All right, let's look at this. I actually adapted my code from the code on this page. All right. I simplified it a little bit. And here we'll look at the code. Alright, here's the HTML. This was saved on a Mac, so if you download it, first of all, just pull that one folder over. Don't pull both files called tests. Just pull the one, the folder over. Also, if, uh, if you open it up in WordPad, save it, then you can open it up in Notepad and see it, because the Mac handles carriage returns a little differently. Alright, notice what I have. I have one HTML page. One thing I didn't point out in the mobile and in the desktop version of it, and you'll sort of have to take my word for it, is that the URL didn't change. So I wasn't redirecting to another page. There's one page that can display one style sheet or the other depending on conditions. So I have my HTML code. I have my two style sheets here. One. It's called screen, which is for a desktop. One is called handheld. And I use the media option to style this page and to select this style sheet when the device is a handheld on the screen and the max device width is 480 pixels. So if these conditions are met, if that's the media on which I'm viewing the web page, then I get the handheld CSS. Otherwise, I get the screen CSS. That's why, even though this is a mobile page, if I browse this on my iPad, I get the full version. So even though this is a quote handheld or mobile device, if I browse it on the iPad, I get the full version. Why? Because this criteria isn't true. The max width is bigger than 480, so therefore I don't get this style sheet. The details of this aren't important to memorize. I just wanted to show you again that it is possible and I wanted to reinforce the concept of uh, this is only possible if you uh, have a clean separation between the presentation and content. Let's look to, at some of the differences between these. Notice I have two H2s, one for full version, one for mobile version. What do you think my style sheets do with those? In other words, why don't I see both of those? I only see one at a time. If I'm viewing it on a desktop, I see the words full version. If I'm viewing it on a mobile device or a handheld device, it says mobile version. What do you think I'm doing in the CSS to make that happen that way? Well, let's look.
Here's the handheld CSS. And notice what I'm doing is I make the thing with the class of mobile, I make visible. The thing with the class full, I make hidden and give it a zero height. So what that does is if I'm browsing this on a mobile device and this style sheet gets applied, then the user won't see this. They'll see this instead. Because I've made this a class, I could put that class on a bunch of different stuff. If I had, for example, detail, a paragraph that was, I wanted to display it on the full site, but I did not want to display it on the mobile site, I'd just give it a class of, mo of mobile. All right? And then it would only show on that and it wouldn't show on, uh, uh, it wouldn't show on the, uh, the other one. Likewise, I could do a similar thing with full. I could give it a class um, of full if I only wanted to show up on, up on, on the full site, and it would hide it uh, if I was viewing the mobile site. So I could control any content, not just this one H2, but any content. I could have, for example, five paragraphs on the full site, give each one of those a class of full that show up on the full site, they wouldn't show up on the mobile site. Let's compare this with the style sheet for the full site. And these, it's just reversed. All right. I made the mobile things invisible. And I didn't make the full things visible, but by default they're going to be visible. All right. What other changes do I have? Well, if you look at the change of the navigation, I make my links inline on the handheld. That's what makes them oriented horizontally. And I make them, oops, where's the full? I make them display this block on the full version so they stack up on top of each other. Also by positioning, you know, in this case I'm setting the position and I'm floating and all that. In this case, I'm not putting any float on them and so therefore they just stack up one on top of the, uh, the other. The details of this are less important than the concept of I could do this only because I've separated the presentation from content from the word go. And I can write code to apply uh, a style sheet uh, differently depending on that. Now, there's a couple of ways I could do this, right? The redirect involves looking at the, uh, looking at the uh, information about the request and redirecting them. Even with this method of multiple style sheets, you could do it this way, which is to let the CSS handle it, or you could write server-side script that looks at it and applies the proper style sheet. So there's a couple flavors of this one, all right? Um, down from the 100,000 that I said before. There's, there's a couple of flavors uh, for this one. I could apply a different style sheet a couple of different ways, all right? But the point is, is one thing to keep in mind with, with all of these techniques is you don't want to duplicate effort. All right? You don't want to recreate the same pages uh, completely from scratch. Therefore, whatever technique you use, if you use a redirect, there's things that you can do on the server to avoid having to duplicate code. So I may send it to a different page, but I, those pages can share some of the code in common. And I'm likely to have a different style sheet and, and so on to get the, the look that I want. All right, so let's summarize. Mobile devices, the big difference between that is, number one, there are limitations associated with that. You use a different browser when you're accessing a mobile website. You use a mobile browser, and that may have limitations. The hardware has limitations. You interact with it in a different way. 
The other one is the, the mindset of the user is likely to be more focused on certain things as opposed to others. All right. Again, part of the job of the designer is to help the user focus on what's important and what they need to see. But for mobile sites, usually the focus is much narrower than it would be on a desktop site. All right. You may be accommodating a bunch of different things on your desktop site. For your mobile site, you may want to pick a couple of things to, to focus on. All right. uh, again, think of LCs, compare their home page with, them, with the mobile page. All right. On the mobile page, it was very focused on the stuff they want to see, which are probably the same things, which are probably the exact things that a uh, person would want to access uh, that from. There's three strategies. One is do nothing and just let the same page ride for the mobile and for the desktop. That can work if your page is simple enough. But for a lot of larger sites that probably isn't going to cut it. Your other choices then become using the server to redirect to a different page or applying different style sheets depending on whether the user is on a mobile or um, on a desktop. In all these things, care is going to be taken, or care ought to be taken, to avoid duplicating data. Therefore, uh, a lot of these are going to be done in server-side scripting so that the code can be shared between different pages. And you're not duplicating functionality in, in, in two versions of the page. Or, at the very least, you're minimizing the duplication of, of functionality. The first part of your last assignment is to write a web page, create a web page that talks about designing mobile websites. And you don't have to apply two style sheets to it like I did. You only need to create one style sheet for it. But the design should be appropriate both for a desktop and for a mobile device. So, Talk about good design guidelines, the differences between design, designing a, a mobile web page and a uh, web page to be viewed on a computer, and then design a web page that follows those guidelines. So there should be two ways I can look at that page and, and see if you really understand this. Number one, I can tell sort of if you understand it just by the way the page looks. And secondly, I can actually read the content. The two should reinforce each other. Your page should be an example of the very principles that you're discussing in there. That's the first part of your um, last assignment. The other part of your last assignment will be to do a little JavaScript uh, thing. And don't let that intimidate you. Um, really, uh, for that part, you really will only need to adapt the one example that I'm going to give probably next time in class. So we'll have a couple of JavaScript labs. We might have a, a project uh, work day. Uh, that's how we'll spend our last four classes. Yeah, did you have a question? Well, I was just wondering, how would we view our site, um, like, so we can check it on ourselves, how would we check our mobile version if it's not trying to be on the desktop? Okay. Because that's how to check your mobile version. First of all, you could look at it in the browser and see that, to check your mobile version. First of all, you could look at it in the browser and see that you can look at it on a, on a regular web browser and sort of come to the conclusion that, that, that this is optimized. One thing you could do very simply is you can make your browser window narrower. Like maybe, maybe that would be the size. I know the Firefox web developer tool allows you to actually set the size of your screen and you can say, so maybe this is how this would look like on a mobile the device. The other thing you can look at is there is in this resource there is an Opera mobile emulator. Um, I think unfortunately that would require you to have the site hosted as well now that I think about it. So I can go in and type LorraineCCC.edu here 
and it will show me what that page will look like on the Opera Mini browser. Actually, that one didn't do the redirect, so it shows what the full site would look like. One thing to realize about uh, emulators uh, is that emulators are um, just that. They're emulators. They're, they're not the real thing. So testing on an emulator is only a, a first step, right? Because you're, you're, you're at the mercy of how good the emulation is or how good the simulation is. So something may look good in the emulator and not look good in real life. So don't use that as your, as your sole testing. But in general, what we'll pass for this class is just make your, just make your screen small and, and, and look at it. And if it looks good in that format, you know, it, it should look good. Other questions? Um, let's, let's do that. Let's, let's Google Android phone screen resolution. Small screens are at least uh, 426 by 320. Normal are at least 470 by 320. Large are 640 by 480. Um, extra large are 960 by 720. And it describes those as not being exactly the same as pixels, but similar to pixels. So. If I were to go and set my screen resolution to 800, oh, I can't. That's 800 by 600. Let's see if I have the web developer extension on here. I think I do. You can do this in Firefox. Resize. Resize window. I could resize it to be a normal screen size, which is 470 by 320. And that's how it would look. Actually, I probably should have reversed them because screens are. I guess that's another difference we didn't talk about. Although you can flip a screen, screens are typically oriented vertically as opposed to oriented. But again, most, most of these mobile devices, as you turn them, it detects it and, and changes the orientation. But you could do that too. This is uh, a web developer plugin in, uh, in, uh, for Firefox. Let's see, or an add-on. Yeah, if you just Google and look for web developer, um, you can install it on Firefox and it has a lot of very useful tools. Um, you can, for example, validate your CSS, validate your X, uh, HTML. You can outline different things. You can, you can do a lot of nice things. You can disable all CSS and see what your page looks like without any CSS. A lot of useful tools uh, that are built into um, that add-on to the Firefox browser. Other questions? All right. We'll see you over in lab.